Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we are continuing with our Edge Browser Control Form. We're going to add some buttons to navigate to different sites with one click. And we're going to make it a little more user friendly. This is part four of my Edge Browser Control series. So if you have not yet watched parts one through three, go watch those right now. What are you doing here? Go watch one and two and three, and then come back and watch four. All right, so today we're gonna work on making our browser a little more user-friendly. The first thing is, whenever I click on this field, okay, I want it to select the entire URL, whatever's in there. All right, you'll see that's a feature in most browsers. If I click up here, it selects the whole thing, okay? And yeah, modern browsers will pop up a whole, you know, search list of stuff that you've looked for previously, but we're not gonna get that deep into it. But it would be nice to not have to click and then select the whole field. I do this in a couple of my other databases and it's not that hard to program in. We're just going to click on the field, go to event. We're gonna go to the on click event, which is right up top here, dot, dot, dot. And we're gonna say right here, my URL dot cell start equals zero start at the beginning of the field cell start is what character do you want to start the selection on okay and then my url dot cell length equals the length of whatever's in that field my url and if your value that you're doing this with by the way happens to be anything other than text make sure you put dot text in here because if it's a date or some other different formatted event or a field with a different type of value in it, then it can give you different results. But this is a basic string field, so we can just get away with this. Save that, come back out here. Let's close it, open it back up again. And if I click here now, there you go. It selects the whole thing. Just makes it easier to type in, right? Next up, if the user doesn't type in the HTTP colon slash slash in there, I wanna add it for them, right? Because a lot of times, what do you type in? You type in findthenc.com, hit go. But the browser itself requires that, either an HTTP or an HTTPS. All right, so we're gonna put that in there as well. Right click, design view. For this now, we're gonna need an after update event. So we'll go to find after update. That means after this field is updated, do some stuff. All right, what's the stuff? Well, if the left of this field isn't equal to HTTP or HTTPS, then we're gonna add it to it, so we can pretty much just look for that HTTP and assume that the user typed it in, right? So if the left of my URL, comma four, right, if the left four characters is not equal to HTTP, right, then we're gonna add it to it. So my URL equals HTTP, I'm gonna put HTTPS in here because today most websites most professional websites at least are secure. They have that SSL secure certificate, right? Um, I've got a couple of test domains that I use for like classes and other personal stuff that I don't have a security certificate for because I don't do any e-commerce on them, but any real website's gonna have an HTTPS. So if they don't type it in, we're gonna assume that, all right? And then add on to that my URL, okay? And does this catch every situation? No. You know, but it's good enough, right? Again, I envision this being an internal tool to visit specific websites. It's not really meant to replace your browser. Okay, save it, come back out here. We're always gonna close and reopen our browser. You're gonna see why, especially in the next lesson when we talk about different sites we try to visit. All right, open it up. And if I come in here now and type in 599cd.com, press enter. And oh, nothing happened. I pressed enter, nothing happened though. Because we've got nothing tied to pressing enter. So what can we do? How can we do that? Well, all we have to do is make this go button our default button so that when we press enter, it pushes that button. How do we do that? Design view, open up the properties for that button, go to other and find the default property. There's default and cancel. Default means if the user hits enter anywhere on this form except in a long text field, then it will push that button. Cancel means if they hit escape, it'll push that button. So you can use that for an escape button also. All right, save it, close it. Let's try it one more time. Open it up, 
Click here, 599cd.com, enter, and there you go, boom, and it works. It adds on the HTTPS, and it presses the go button. All right, let's do another one, google.com, enter, boom, perfect. Okay, okay. Now, let's say I am gonna use this as a tool for my business, right? And I've got a couple of sites that I always wanna visit on a regular basis. Uh, maybe your corporate site, maybe a site you go to get information, documents, you know, whatever. Uh, again, we're gonna, this is gonna be a tool for us to use for our business. So I'm going to make a couple of buttons over here. Let's make this smaller. I'm gonna put a couple of buttons over here that are gonna launch specific websites that I wanna visit on a regular basis. All right, we'll start with my own. I'm gonna copy this button here, copy, paste then it's gonna stick it behind there. Just drag it over here. All right, and the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to my website, which is 599cd.com. Why? There's a whole story on my website. I'll, I'll put a link down below as to why my site is 599cd.com. I'm not gonna go over it now, but it's an interesting story. All right, let's name the button first, bring up its properties, come over here. Now, I'm gonna type in 599cd BTN button, okay? Now, we need to put something in the button. So we're gonna right click, build event, and notice what it called it. Normally it's the button name underscore click. Notice it added CTL in front of it. Okay, control 599cd button dot click. And I cover this in my developer class. But you can't start a sub or function name with a number. You have to start it with a letter, okay? And for this reason, I also don't like to start my controls with a number, okay? And I should do this intentionally. So let's get rid of this code block here, all right? I'm gonna come back out here and we're gonna call this something different. Don't start a control name with a number, all right? Let's call it the load 599CD button, like that, or not loan. You can loan 59CD something if you want to, 0% interest, of course, load. <laughs> Okay, right click, build event, and that's what I wanted to see. All right, now in here we know how to navigate, right? We've done it before. So wb.navigate, and we're just gonna give it a specific URL, https colon slash slash 599c.com. Save it, back out here, close it, open it, and now we can, we can type in an address and hit the go button or just click that button to go to a specific page, right? Now, if you wanna make multiple buttons here, okay, you can do that, but instead of putting events in for each different button, let's make a function, an event function that we can just send the URL into, right? So let's make our own function right here, private, function, let's call it load page, and then we'll send into it a URL as a string. Okay, and all this guy has to do is navigate to whatever URL we tell it, wb.navigate to the URL. And we're also gonna change the address bar at the top so that it also shows it there too, my URL equals URL, okay? Now that it's a function, we can get rid of this. Watch this, get rid of that. Save it, all right, and then come back out here. And now in the button, whoops, I double clicked on it. You don't wanna do that. And in the button, we're gonna come over here to the event. And for the on click, I'm gonna zoom in, Shift F2. We're gonna say equals load page, and then our URL, HTTPS. 599c.com, just like that. Remember now, because it's a function, we can use this directly in an event. This is called an event handler function. Got a whole separate video on it. I'll put a link down below. Okay, hit okay. And now if you open it up now, it changes, yes. You'll see it works the same way. But the beauty of this now is we don't have to put code in for separate buttons. Copy, paste. Let's do another one on my websites. Let's go to PC Resale, pcresale.net. This is one that I use for, for training purposes. Open up this one. All right, now first we'll start with the name and give it a good name, right? Load PC Resale button. But now for its event, I don't have to give it a whole separate event function. I just come in here and change this. Now this is one of those domains that's not secured. 
and I'll just change this to pcresale.net. So yes, this is important. If they use HTTPS, make sure you specify the S. If not, don't specify it. Okay, save it, close it, open it, and now I can jump to that site. There it is. Took us take took a second to load up. Okay. So now I've got my address bar all set. The go button's a default button. I can jump between these two domains, right? Nice and easily. And there you go. Our browser is getting one step closer to being something pretty cool and functional. In tomorrow's lesson, we're going to add a back button, a forward button, and talk about the execute JavaScript command. Lots more to come. And if you like learning with me, head over to my website and check out my developer classes. I've got tons and tons, many, many hours of different developer lessons teaching you everything you need to know about VBA and Access. Check it out. But that's going to do it for today, folks. That's your Tech Help video. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really wanna learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward, <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, $1. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. 
Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.